Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. We're here again today teaching you all the magic tricks for hair. That's, oh, yeah. that's it. Because <laughs> this literally is, I think, as close to a magic trick as you can get for hair. I think, I think so too. Do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, you know, there's so many things that, um, you know, when I'm feeling my hair or when, you know, I'm like, oh, I really need a haircut or, you know, there's just so many challenges that what we're going to teach you today resolves like the texture of your hair the length of your hair mm -hmm. the grow out phase mm -hmm. the health the look the shine what all else of it. Layers, else? all of it. it it resolves it all so we are going to teach you guys a dusting cut and i think we've talked about it before but we wanted to do an updated version of what a dusting cut is exactly especially because of everybody's like in and out, can go to hairstylist, can't go to hairstylist, all this, you know, like in and out. Did you guys get what I mean by yes. that? Like <laughs> we're in and out of COVID, like can and cannot, <laughs> can and cannot go out of our house, you know, all the decisions. So um, what we wanted to do today was teach you our, our favorite, favorite trick, which is a dusting cut. And you know how I'll show you trying to do it on myself. Savannah can try and do it on herself. We can kind of show you different angles, different, just all the tricks we can think of to teach you how to do a dusting cut because it's like bonkers good for your hair. Yeah, it's awesome. Literally bonkers, <laughs> that's how crazy it is. We are going to um, slide chairs around and then we'll teach you all the goodness. Um, okay, so what, what, you can, what you can see that Savannah is doing is, I'm gonna turn a little bit. Can yep. you turn your elbow this, or is that too hard? Can I? Yeah, right there, so, that's awesome. Okay, so do you see how she's bending the hair over and then keeping all the hair tight that's wrapped through? And then as she moves her hands down, she is slowly clipping the ends that look a little bit more frayed or our, you know, split ends, all the ends that you look at and you're like, why are these in my hair and I need a haircut, but you feel like you need to get your hair cut up to here. So instead you just go through and do this dusting cut. So you can do this um, all throughout your hair. And, you know, you can do it with a comb, you can do it with your fingers. Um, I. I recommend doing it with a smaller shears though. If you don't have like an actual hair cutting shears, like we have kind of more professional ones. These are like Medium. lower grade. <laughs> Those you could probably get at Sally's. I yeah, think. these are kind of, they come in like right. clipper sets for men, oh all this stuff um, comes together. So Savannah, so you always prefer cutting with over your fingers? Is that I do, yeah, I just feel like I have a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's a little bit easier for me to keep the hair like tight on the back of my finger okay than it is on the comb for me but that's probably just because I haven't tried it with the comb as much mm -hmm. which way would you uh, recommend like beginners try I think fingers is easier for beginners. I like a comb because I can separate more hair with it but if you don't have the right comb like some of them the teeth are too far apart and so that's going to not give you as much control as I would want you to have. And some of them are too close together. Like this one's too close together. So you'd need a, like, you need a very specific comb. Mm -hmm. So that's why fingers and just putting the tension between them is really like an easy way to do it. Yeah, you can definitely probably spread the hair out further on a comb. Um, my preference, I like to start with taking small pieces from the very top like this section that I took mm, is mm -hmm. this big because I feel like this area is the area that has like the most damage to it I absolutely agree especially with the way you and I choose to do hair mm -hmm. is is like kind of curl the top more than the bottom yeah and then usually like if people are having like layer issues or anything like that that they're trying to grow out that's mm -hmm. I feel like usually in this kind of mohawk area too yeah, yeah. I agree with that Christy looks like she's saying, please show how to do the ends cut as well. So do you go all the way down to the bottom, Savannah? Is that what you're doing? Um, I do, but I start to leave out a little bit more hair whenever I get towards the end because there's some, there's more like layers down at the bottom that mm -hmm. I know you don't just want cut just because they're okay. poking out. Yep. I try to only cut the ones that look like they have Squiggles. a split end or a squiggle or mm -hmm. something on them. Okay. 
And how often should you do dusting cut? Mm. It's almost like as an as needed basis, I feel like. Yeah, because it depends on how much heat you use on your hair. How often do you think we do these, Savannah? Every couple months? Yeah, probably about that. Yeah, because we're we still do a lot with our hair, even though we don't do it. Do you think, actually, no, I think it's a lot less than that. It can't be every couple months, is it? I think we've probably done it on live like maybe six times total. Yeah. And, and that's the only time we've done years. it. Right? Yeah. And yeah, we've never done a dusting cut not on live, so. Yeah, or on video or something. Yeah. So I've done everything that I've done is here. Okay. And down. So I think what we'll do is kind of brush through it and see if you guys can see the difference from side to side. Um, I can't see anything because it gets so dark. But basically what happens is this side feels smoother, it lays smoother, um, it, it just looks healthier and really feels healthier. Mm -hmm. When you get a dusting cut, you're like obsessed with feeling your it hair, or I so am. Better, Are you yeah. that way too? Yeah. Yeah. When I get it. Real good one. And Susan wants to know, when you dust cut, do you need to do the whole head or just certain areas? You but can do whatever you want. I mean, if you have a certain area that's really crispy or crunchy or wavy or squiggly, any of those things, or split ends, like a lot of people do their face frame a lot more and dehydrate that, so that would be a good area to do. But I like to do the whole thing because I like it all to be consistently looking shiny. Yeah. You just have to do a little bit more in the front usually or the top layer that Savannah's kind of spending more time on. So your yeah, choice. That, that top layer I think is the most important area, but mm -hmm. I like to do the whole head too. Yeah. It just feels so nice. I like it better than even getting a haircut, I think. Like, haircut is good, but this is, like, amazing. Mm -hmm. If you're not changing the shape of a haircut, yeah. Yeah, that's it, true. It's way better. Yeah. I think it's important to think about the your fingers and your scissors being parallel to each other, right? So you're kind of working like this all the time. If you, I mean, right? I, I would say parallel, yeah. Yeah. I would say parallel. Okay. Some version of parallel. <laughs> yeah, some version, because you rotate okay. your fingers more or less. And if you, if you're doing a dusting cut, like Savannah, try going up, like at an angle. What happens when you go, when you kind of lift up? Like if I was lower, do you see more? Do you see less? Does that work better? I think I see better? it sooner. I see the hair around this bend of my finger instead of the front bend of my finger. Uh huh. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it should pop out higher and more yeah. uh, apparent. So like if you were somebody who isn't used to cutting hair, this way would probably be more apparent to you. Um, it'd be easier to not make a mistake, but you'll also get longer pops coming out, I would think. And you don't have to cut off every single yes. one of those, just the ones that look damaged. Right, and you don't have to cut off all the way down to your fingers. If it pops higher, you can cut up higher. So yeah. you can put a different ledge um, away from your fingers, like a higher ledge. Something else I feel like that's helpful, especially in this area, since we have so much lighting, mm -hmm. um, doing it into the light instead of into a shadow, because then you can really see the oh yeah, defined little hairs that pop up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, what else am I thinking of that this is helpful for? So, like, right after you get a haircut, sometimes, you know, like, hairstylists don't keep your hair quite as healthy as you might like. Like, this might be a good way to, you know, just uh, kind of update your look, or maybe you didn't have time for the haircut or something. This is an easy way to just get your hair in a healthy shape as fast as possible. And if you were, so somebody was asking about teaching how to cut the ends of your hair. If you were doing a dusting cut and you got to the point where, you know, you had kind of really sparse ends like this where you can barely see them. I don't know if you guys can even see them at all. Um, but like you could get to these and just cut that little bit and nobody's ever going to notice that. I don't even think you could get your hair crooked by doing that. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, oh, I see. So do you see how see-through that is? Like if you cut those little see-through ones, like you're, that'll be a good way to just get your ends like in good shape if they're still, like if you did everything else and then you still have split ends down there, you could go to that very like slight, slight end and get those off in your face frame area. I think that would be a good thing. 
We're almost done. We've got about one more section. Okay. Um, let's see. So I think we should do a refresher on what a dusting cut does. <clears throat> so for many reasons, there are many reasons to do a dusting cut. If you're having some ends that are sticking out that are a little bit crazy because you're going through a new growth cycle, if you've um, dehydrated your hair at any point, whether it's uh, chemically treated or heat treated, um, so it'll start causing pieces to stick out in a wily way. Um, so they'll be like split end looking or wiry looking. And so what this dusting cut does is remove all of those kinds of ends to keep, give it a more silky, soft, smooth look and feel. So um, it can help you between cuts. It can help you after a cut. It's, there's no time that isn't good to do this, I would say. There's like nothing that would stop me from doing a dusty cut at any given time. Yeah, you can't time. really overdo it. Yeah. It's, I mean, you're cutting off so minimally that you really don't even have to sweep up the floor after. It's like that minimal. It's like hard to find the hair after. Mm -hmm. um, but it's amazing that, you know, it's a little time consuming to go through and do it. So we've been doing this for like, what, 40 minutes now? And you can see that, but I have long hair and thick hair. So I don't know that it would take 40 minutes for everybody, but it's really um, just a good pick me up for your hair. And you keep the density, you keep the thickness, you keep the length and you improve the feel. So mm -hmm. that's why we love uh, the dusting cut. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, thanks for sharing your stories with us. I saw a couple people having to be masked and stuff, but they're smiling with their eyes. So keep up the smiles and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.